I started up there chasing fish in the creek and then the stories of big catfish in the Mississippi River and after that I was pretty much hooked. He found a way to turn his favorite hobby as a child into a Hall of Fame career. And he's helped produce millions of fish along the way so that others can enjoy their own special moments. He shows us how as he takes us to the heart of his story. You see, there's something about fishing, alone or with friends and family, a calmness, a way to connect with nature, but at the same time, the excitement and anticipation for what you just might catch on a sunny summer day. For Jeremiah Haas, that started with his dad. What was it that got you hooked, if you will? Probably fishing as a kid. You know, my dad started taking me fishing. I was fortunate enough to grow up on the Apple River in you know, northwestern Illinois, one of the better smallmouth and one of the prime fishing rivers of, the, of Illinois. So I started up there chasing fish in the creek and then the stories of big catfish in the Mississippi River and after that I was pretty much hooked. So you're one of those kids that was, whenever the season was right or whenever the weather was right, you were out there trying to bring in something. Absolutely and you know just like I said the stories of the big catfish, you know of the ones up around the dam growing up you know, in that area and going by the dam there at Dubuque and you'd always wonder if we're driving over the bridge and seeing that big catfish down there, if we could get our hands on it. Did you ever get it, your hands on one? Uh, one or two. How big? What's the biggest? For flathead catfish, probably in the 80 pound range. As he became a young man, he wondered, is there any way to make a career out of this? And so when did you decide, man, I might want to do something like this for a living? Well, actually, I wanted to learn how to hunt and fish better. That's why I went into this field. You know, I, you know, growing up in the 80s, I thought I was going to be a farmer, and then with the 80s and the farm stuff, it, it just didn't work out. We ended up moving off the farm, so I wanted to basically still be a professional fisherman, which I have never bass fished, you know, on the boats and all that stuff. I wasn't really aware of that kind of thing. I was a creek fisherman, so, you know, pushing it, and then I started uh, working with Illinois DNR when I was pretty young, maybe a little too young, uh, but I was big, and they let me on there, and then you know, it's one of those things where being in that proximity to them, learning so much about the river and the waters, it made it pretty quick as far as transition to what I wanted to do in life. Like many of us fortunate enough to have one, it was a moment with a mentor that changed everything. Well, the biggest one would be Mike Conlon. He was the chief of fisheries uh, for mm -hmm. 25 years. And when I was first starting in my career, I was a volunteer. And I still remember we were down to the Illinois State Fair. And as a volunteer, I got to go down there and hang out and stuff. And, and I just spoke with him for about 10 minutes. And at that point, I was actually thinking about switching careers because I had a job offer to be working accounting, you know, and this was in the mid-90s and paid very, very well. And I've been told a long time, you're not going to make any money in, in biology. And, and just those, those talking about the things that we just talked about, you know, why do you go to work every day? You know, and I was fortunate to be trained by some of the best biologists in the state of Illinois. That training would lead him to a place that was not on his radar at all. Never knew this kind of job even existed. Instead of taking fish from the waters of his home area, he would be putting millions of fish and other aquatic creatures back into area rivers, streams, and lakes. So I got a call from Ken Claude Felt from the DNR, and I had been working for the Illinois Natural History Survey down in Havana. Actually, we were working on Asian carp. Um, as they were just starting to come through uh, and said so there was an opportunity to work at the nuclear plant and I wanted to know if I was interested and I said you want me to do what? <laughs> I had never heard of this you know even in all the years of running around up here so I uh, came up here and interviewed and was hired on pretty quick and yeah it's it's been interesting and then I did that for six years for the programs that I was man that I'm managing now and then crossed over and took over the lead role out here. And what's really cool about your job, I think, is that you are making an incredible impact, you and your team, because you get to see the results of your work. You're actually putting so much more in than, than is being taken out. Yeah, and, and you mentioned team, too. I mean, so your, your team really isn't just the individuals here. We've had basically no turnover here in 20 years. So I've got a super strong team. And people recognize us out there. So the impacts we hear from the public 
you know, every time we show up to a boat ramp, you know, people come over and talk and they want to know what are you doing and we were able to show them and really educate. So it's been very rewarding in that respect because you get a lot of positive feedback. And millions of fish possibilities, hundreds of thousands of fish, I assume, have come through here? Millions. Millions. Yeah. Yeah, since we started the walleye program alone, we're over 10 million two inch or bigger walleyes to the, the local rivers. And then you get to take that and share it with the next generation and the next. Last time I was here, you had some college interns, I think they were. And then you have high schoolers from time to time that you visit with in grade schools that you talk to and try to instill in them your passion, your love of the environment. Yeah, and it's like anything else. If you, if you want to, if it wants to have, you want to have value, you have to be involved with it. So one of the things I try to do here, we usually have anywhere from 750, 1500, depending on the COVID years, we're a little light on visitors, but we try to get people to get in touch with it. You know, for instance, if I have kids in here at the fish hatchery, I ask them, anybody not touched a fish before? They're gonna touch a fish before they leave. You know, and we have some unique fish here. We have alligator gar here on site. So being able to let them see those up close, even if they don't touch them, they make that connection, you know, and then they see it on TV, you know, River Monsters or whatever the show is, you know, on Animal Planet or one of those, and they're, they've got that connection. And as soon as they have the connection, then it becomes real. And all of a sudden, everything around here becomes real versus that thing I see on TV. In his downtime, what does he do? Well, of course, he goes fishing, but not for himself. For me personally, I like to go fishing with people who have not been on the Mississippi River fishing. And we catch one of those walleyes that has a brand on the side. And you're like, hey, that was Henry. We let him go six years ago, you know, as a joke, obviously. Yeah, right. But again, it's, it's seeing that direct impact with people that wouldn't have been out there otherwise. Without a doubt, that's my favorite. I was just asking Doc, because he has showed us a little, yeah. a little one this big, how, how you get the uh, brand on that thing. Yeah. The little tiny branding iron. Yeah, <laughs> we usually let them get a little bigger than that. But yeah, two inches, even at two inches, they're pretty small. But when you can catch a fish that's 12, 13 pounds, and you know you stock that at two inches and it has the brand on the side, you know, that's, that's a pretty neat feeling to know that that's been out there that long. So many fish that his team has literally left their marks on. A small way to measure the success. But make no mistake, it's having a very big impact. So much so, it has earned him a huge honor. This year, inducted into the Hall of Fame. Caught me off guard, but I honestly, I was blown away. A little bit embarrassed, I guess, because you don't do this in a silo. This wasn't my effort. You know, I've mentioned, you know, 20 years we've had no turnover here. We've got a very, very strong team, and it's really a team effort on these things. Every team needs a leader, and you have shown your leadership. Yeah. Sometimes it helps be honored. Yes. <laughs> Did they give you a special jacket with, like, fish? <laughs> the green jacket with fish yeah. on it? No. Uh, I did get a little uh, little trophy or a little plaque for that, so yeah, I did get that. But no jacket. No jacket. It'd just get dirty and covered in mud anyway. Dirty and covered in mud. That's the way he has lived his life. From the little boy who grew up fishing with his dad, hoping to bring in the big one, to the man keeping the rivers and lakes stocked and healthy so that generations of boys and girls can have that same experience. Yeah, my mom and dad got to come, so it was, it was a cool thing for them I'm sure to see and and then to see the the other circle and that was the thing you know not really getting to talk to them very much that night you know we sat at the table there and I had some friends and family here from local but then all my they had a table just the people from work that came and you know our corporate environmental flew out from Philly and so it's just a lot of surprises that night for people that came so that was that was heartwarming to have everybody show up and all the people you work with every day and just knowing that they appreciate what you do as well but he is far from being done leaving his mark, inspiring the next generation, and finding ways to keep our wild world thriving, one species at a time. To see the team in action, make sure to check out our videos on That's Wild with Gary Metivier on YouTube. You can see for yourself how the fish shocking and egg stripping really works. There's so many more adventures out there. Subscribe and hit that bell. Thanks to our sponsors, Peterson Plumbing and Heating, QCA Pools and Spas, and Morrison Community Hospital.